Greetings, hello, and welcome everyone to more Age of Mythology Retold. You know, this replay system is really kind of bugging me on how the timer is kind of all off, but that's neither here nor there. We're playing on Oasis on the blue side. It's Ian Magic, one of the pro players, playing as Isis. I see this play quite a lot, actually, where it's usually like Zeus and... And Isis kind of are the two main sieves. And I think the reason why is just because the priests are so good, among many other things. We're going aggressive early on here, getting some of the zebras. The pharaoh here is enchanting the granary. We're sending some new villagers to get gold, as well as having the priests to make some obelisks for line of sight. Over on the other side on the red team, oh, look at that. Did the lightning bolt power i think did that get his priest it did that's actually a really big opening play i like that a lot on the red side playing as zeus you have husk sup <laughs> is that the, is that how you pronounce the gentleman's name i do apologize to the gentleman i'm fairly new to some of these new players in their gamer tags playing as zeus i'm just gonna call him husks uh, getting a granary right by the zebras, more or less kind of opening in the same kind of style. The scout is running around picking up as many goats as possible. Going over to Ian's side, we are surrounding both the tower, built a monument right next to the tower, and then building houses are queued. Actually, look at that. He's microing that zebra to get closer to that granary. What a smart man. And I'm imagining uh, he's going to send a villager as his population gets close to build those houses is kind of my guess there. Meanwhile, there's quite a lot of goats returning to Husk's side. There's a temple being built in between the two gold piles. And then taking a look at the relics that we see on the map, we have the Tower of Cestus. I wish it was the Tower of Hestus. Attack, uh, tower attack against myth units in this bottom corner. We have the arrow of Hercules. I want to say Hercules, but that's not correct. I, I slaughter these names, and I do apologize. Increase the attack of ranged soldiers. And then this one here increases villager hit points. And the one right dead in the center by all the giraffes. Uh, siege weapons are cheaper. Food, wood, gold, and favor. That one's actually huge. My goodness, that's a really good one. I'm really curious to see how this is built out here. There is a temple being built by Eom as well. We're seeing more houses being built by Husks. Going back to what's been explored. I'm sorry, what's been uh, the normal sighting? I go over to Husks. He's got most of the map laid out here. Quite a lot of goats have returned to the town center. That's Hopefully that'll be important. As the game kind of progresses, we're researching age two for Athena. So we're going to get the Minotaurs. Uh, I, I actually like that play call quite a lot, getting the heal from Athena. Over on Ian's side, we are researching Bast, goddess of protection and cats. That's where you get the Sphinx, I believe. Just activated the power prosperity. Target anywhere to make all of your villagers and trade caravans gather gold faster. So look at how quickly. Look at the gold count completely plummet while it's also being inspired by the pharaoh. I imagine that that is stacked. The enchanting of the pharaoh as well as uh, the god power here. Probably my assumption. I don't see why that wouldn't be the case. Villager counts were pretty even. No real military units yet out of Eam as well. Gold count is like astronomical. Look at that, over 800 gold. I wonder if he could use that to maybe just a straight pivot into age three. We'll kind of see how this goes. All the zebras have been gathered upon. There's a new granary set over here by the chickens. Now, with Egypt, almost all of your units do consume gold. We're seeing Husk over here. He's going to build a granary by these giraffes. The giraffes provide 300 food each. I mean, that's quite a lot. I mean, that, that has to be illegal. Why you got to do that to the giraffes? I don't, I don't know if I appreciate that, but nonetheless, it has to be done. Oh, and there's monkeys, too, all over the place. Jason, the hero, has been trained. Getting attacked by the towers by Eam. 
Yeah, look at that. Okay, so the houses are being surrounded. So the, the monument actually fully blocks off any attack on those towers. Ian, pretty early on, is going to go ahead and get a settlement. There is a Minotaur from Husk. The Sphinx is getting attacked. I always want to call that Hercules, but that's not correct. Is that Heracles? Minotaur, there's two priests... We'll see if the... Oh, there's three priests, actually. Can they handle... That actually smoked the Minotaur. My goodness. Did you see that? These old men are really good. That divine damage is great. Yeah. Heracles is going to have to retreat. There is Jason there. But yeah, I mean, I do think that that is quite a really... Really great strat. Look at the Sphinxes all the way over here from... From Eam... Not going to go ahead and do any sort of attack. No, just kind of scouting with it. Building an obelisk, the granary for the drafts as well. That's absolutely amazing. We we love it. Really aggressive here, kind of towards the center. We're going to build a barracks. Kind of towards the middle. Here we go, another engagement. With some cav, we got the range of the arrows of the town center. The Sphinx has returned. I love the little tornado that the Sphinx can do as well. Villagers are kind of diving and ducking in cover. And then over here in the middle, look at this. We got uh, two archery ranges, a military academy, and a stable all under construction by Husk. Eam does not see it. Oh, maybe what he does with that obelisk. No, he doesn't. Not even with the obelisk. That's huge. That really would be huge. We got more houses under construction. Husk is not putting the houses under the towers, kind of like how uh, Eam does. Another Stay barracks under construction. Looks like we're going to have an engagement here. Let's see how we do, gentlemen. There are so many priests. There's five priests. There's a heal and repair the restoration from Husk to kind of give his units an additional heal under combat here. There are the arrows from the TC. The Pharaoh may fall. The, the villager's going to garrison. We do have spearmen under construction. Garrison under the town center. Really a complete victory. Oh, he garrisoned even the priest as well. Given on how low Im is. I'm sorry, that's Husk that's actually low on food, but Ian isn't actually gathering food at the moment. The cross, he's going to go ahead and grab the berries last, and then these monkeys over here. The giraffes are no longer viable. Still trying to get the units to fall under TC fire. Meanwhile, Husk is he has everything that he ever needs right here. All three unit types. The Cav has been really helpful for him. There's another barracks that's going to be under construction. The Sphinx has... I didn't even see this. The Sphinx made it all the way around to kind of bother some of the villagers. That really doesn't seem to be a problem. He's going to pivot over to the center of the oasis for more trees. It looks like Hus did get that Dwarven Caliper's Relic. That's huge. He is circling around the map. Has also pulled the villagers away from... The baboons over to the giraffe. Back under TC Fire Garrison, please. You know, the town center arrows don't do as much damage to units as they do in in AoE 4. In AoE 4, it's kind of, kind of crazy. Both are still comfortably sitting here in age 2. Do we see any armories from Ian? I don't. Not over here. It really seems the bulk of the battle is going to be taking place in the middle. How are we doing so far in this game? Oh, this game's going to be going on for a while. I'll probably get this sped up just a little bit. Just so we're not kind of hanging around here all day. Look at that. He's still gathering the giraffes under getting attack. Unbelievable. He's really been relegated to a bunch of slingers. I wonder, I mean, there's a viable attack to go around the other side of the oasis. But I can completely understand, given on where this proxy is, Husk is going to want to get as many units out here as possible. I mean, my goodness. He's using the, I mean, the villagers. 
just letting the villagers go. I mean, he does have more villagers, about 13 more. That has to be given to the second town center that he has. Is really starting to stack up. He's got almost all of the giraffes. That one's going to start decaying here. We're moving over to the baboons. Just be mindful. He's queuing up farms. I don't know if that's it looks like it is intentional. Pharaoh has fallen. That Sphinx is really hanging out. Look at him queue up the movements of the Sphinx around the town center. That's really been helpful for him. Training as many units as he can. We're still under town center fire. It's not really a whole lot of favor for either one of them to do any sort of major powers. I mean, there is the age, uh, age two uh, eclipse here. Improving the abilities of your myth units, increasing the rate at which your monuments generate favor. That's not being used yet. There's a ton of idle villagers. We're going to queue up some more barracks. Look out. Can they hold off the attack? We're seeing more reinforcements being trained in the middle. Another military academy. We're going to go ahead and mine this gold ahead of time. To hell with the drop-off point. There's the drop-off point. And now, Eam's going to actually push all the way into Husk's base. Give him a run for his money. Yet, more reinforcements are being trained. Good back and forth. A wall has been built here to kind of force Husk's military to go around that town center. Still, this side is wide open. We do see time and time again, by the way, that at least in the games that I've been casting... We'll see the town centers. These players are will build the town centers in the more middle location rather than the more safe location back here. Looks like uh, Husk is kind of regathering military. There's some towers being built by Eam. I love the use of this wall, by the way. It's small, but very useful. Look at that. That looks like the upgraded Minotaur. Yeah, the bold Minotaur. Gathering quite a bit of gold. Those are some big boys. Trying to go back and forth on an engagement. Ooh, that was a nice use. The special ability of the myth unit there. Retreating into the town center. I'm actually shocked that Husk is following this. We're going to garrison, garrison. No, we're going to... Now we're going to garrison. I actually don't even know if he has this, actually. He... He's farming through through this as well. I mean, I would gar garrison the Phillies, personally. I mean, he might be very desperate for food. But this is just a slaughter. I don't know. There must be some reason as to that play call why there wasn't garrison. He did finally garrison 16 or 17 Phillies in there. But not before most of the military was lost. Brought all the way back to the base. There's another Sphinx. Building some more towers as we can. There's units all over the place. Raiding the town center. Doesn't look too good. It's on fire. Still trying to build units. Yet there's just a wave of units pushing back the villies from EM. That brand new tower is toast. Still trying to get the villies to farm as much as they could. There is a bunch of farmland here. New market being built. There is the armory. wonder if we're going to start trading for resources. He's going to go ahead and say, I'm going to go ahead and start attacking the pop. Meanwhile, villagers are having an issue at the second town center. The reinforcements aren't doing as well. We can see some trading going on in that market. That settlement TC might be toast. What's he going to do with the villies? Try to get them out. He's letting that town center fall, yet Husk is just generating more and more military, despite having fewer villagers. He's playing this a little bit better on the military side. Looks like the bulk of that, if not all of that proxy that Ian has built here is absolutely going to fall to the ground. Put an F in the chat for my boy and all the resources. I didn't even see this. Look, a wall has been queued from Husk. He's going to try and wall in his opponent. A forward aggressive wall. Grouping up his units. wonder if he's going to attack from that side. Eam aging up into age 3. He's hoping that a tech up is going to help him here. He's going to train and build a, a stronghold. However, if that wooden wall can be built up in time, 
He has nowhere to escape. That's a big military from Husk. Still in age two. Ian still has a comfortable villager lead, but maybe not for too much longer. Villagers are, you know, sneakily gathering gold there. There's going to be an engagement maybe from these chariot archers. They look kind of funny. Look at them. <laughs> I don't even know. Like, it looks <laughs> It's actually hilarious. Oh my gosh. It looks proportionally out of control. Those chariot archers are good. Look at them smoking the infantry, pulling back. He's massing these chariot archers. Two strongholds. Siege workshop. He's going to be under the keep fire. Look at all these villagers just in the combat zone getting the gold. I imagine that he's trying his best that he can. There's the ancestor leader power that has been dropped by Iam. Trying to defend under TC fire. Hey, it may not have worked as well as I thought it would have, to be honest with you. Still, massing chariot archers is probably something I'm going to have to look into. That seems really, really cool. Meanwhile, that wall got built. And Husk has majority of map control. I mean, he can see most of the gold piles. There's an armory over there. Looking at Husk. Making very mindful decisions on what his military wants to do. He thinks he's pulling away. Meanwhile, there are some chariot archers going to do a raid. There is another TC over there by Husk. He's going to just kind of... Kind of really arrow down on those villagers farming. Meanwhile, kind of a back and forth play here. Villagers are going to go ahead and gather the gold. Ian is handling this very well, especially with this raid on the villagers. Unfortunately, those towers are working out well for Husk. Husk is deciding to go ahead and take out some towers of his own. Engage back and forth with those chariot archers as best as he can. These things in mass are really good. Really, really good. Looks like that villager lead that EM has is probably soon going to come to an end. There is that open settlement slot back there if he really wanted it to. But I imagine the resources are best used on military. He's in a good position massing these chariot archers. Unbelievable. Look at that. There is going to be a siege workshop queued here from EM. Bothering some of these uh, proxy buildings. He has an opportunity to raid here if he can kind of get the line of sight. There is a siege tower to stop bothering these buildings as well. Let's go ahead and tear down that proxy. Meanwhile, Iam is retaking that settlement. This is a really good play. Like, he's pulling the military all the way back from Husk. Kind of got a little bit of an engagement there, but we also see this here. There's two battles occurring at the same time. Meanwhile, a wall is being built to kind of defend from future raiding. I like the use of these walls. I really do. There's a there's a granary and a farm way back there. You don't want the villager to return all the way home. Absolutely, that's kind of the move. Back and forth once again. That settlement is finally up. A lot of map control actually returning here. A lot of gold mining as well. I mean, look at the gold count. Let's see here. Back over to Zeus. We're seeing more proxy buildings under construction all over the place. Stables, archery ranges are kind of the name of the game here. War elephants. Oh, I love the war elephants. And AoE4, they're kind of nasty. Seems like the main hero unit that's being built here. Our priests, war elephants, and chariots. They now have the upgrade to heavy chariot archers. Still trying the cav route from Zeus. A lot of military production buildings being laid down here on the ground. Raiding is continuing. That one villager, unfortunately, did not make it. RIP to my boy. It's looking actually really good for Egypt in this engagement. Seems like he's really turned the tide of the battle. We got farms under construction back in the homeland. Starting to get some good resource counts, both at the maximum 100 villies. 
that both sieves offer. That's an age up from Husk. Finally got to age three. Better late than never. I imagine most of his resources were going into military. Got the underworld power. That could be really great later on in the game. I'm still shocked on how good these chariot archers are. I mean, let's go ahead and zoom in for added effect. I mean, that is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Meanwhile, the siege tower is trying to turn on this proxy building by building. We did grab this other settlement here by Egypt, making sure that we could continue the economy. Population counts. More production buildings are being built here, but it's just non-stop chariot archers. That's the name of the game. This is a great game. Great game. Look at this. A bunch of units here. Oh, we're going to have... Oh, he's going to keep dropping them over here. Let's see if Ian can kind of catch on that there's the underworld passage that's been invoked where does it connect to that's a great question i actually don't see where a little bit of rating going oh it's in the back unbelievable i don't even know how he got it in the back there to be honest the keep drop was successful on that gold pile he's gonna go ahead and start mining that gold that's a brilliant play call Looks like gold is going to be an issue for these players coming up. I'm not sure if trading is going to be in the future. Meteor shower has been invoked. Look how beautiful it is. Oh my goodness. There's a siege tower flying in the air that's on fire. It's going to go ahead and get that underworld passage. What a beautiful leader power into age four. There is going to be some problems to be had. There is a new army here to kind of take on this fortress. Maybe he can kind of regather Lost Land. Meanwhile, on Zeus, a whole bunch of stables and archer rangers under construction yet again. The resources, both civs have really high food counts. Not so much of gold counts. Gold is going to be an issue. We can kind of see, oh, there's the flying phoenix. Meanwhile, chariot archers are still kind of unstoppable. Ch champion chariot archers. Say that five times fast. I mean, borderline unstoppable is what's going on here. Absolute victory for Egypt. Chariot archers are OP, am I right? Let's look at the post game. Back and forth here on the highlights. I think that really was what makes it a good game when you see back and forth on highlights. Looking at a timeline perspective, I mean, that recovery all the way up through age three into age four, I mean, you couldn't have really asked for a better game. Units killed, even though EM has more units killed in buildings raised, still, it was a really good back and forth. I really enjoyed that. If you enjoyed this, there is a playlist for the cast of games that we're going to be doing on the channel for Age of Mythology Retold. So be sure to check that out. And we do some uh, multiplayer games of our own that we play. There's a separate playlist there. And then finally, we're making guides and top tips for new players, particularly on Xbox. If you want to pick up AOM on Xbox, be sure to check out those videos as well. Thanks for watching, everybody. And I'll see you, James.